Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com, and today we are going to make some bling bling, Zelda style. And what we're going to do is create a long shadow that is very popular in these very flat designs uh, that are popular these days. And we're going to do it and apply this to actually 3D objects. A lot of the time you see this, it's just applied to a, f a flat object and it really doesn't move that much. But you can see in this animated GIF that I made that the shadow actually has some perspective and actually follows this slight rotation that I gave to the rupee here. Uh, so that's done all in Cinema 4D. And doing it in Cinema 4D allows for that kind of depth uh, that kind of follows the silhouette or profile of the shape and then changes as the object moves. And you don't have to like keyframe anything or anything like that. So I'm going to be showing you how to get this uh, long shadow effect in Cinema 4D. Uh, and <clears throat> the first thing you need to know is that for this to whole work, this whole flat design to work, you're going to need a camera with a parallel projection. What parallel projection is, is it's just going to be parallel, looking straight directly at an object. And you can see that I have no uh, rotation values or anything like that. But you can see that even if I did have a rotation value, it's still just looking down and everything's still just straight, uh, flat, head on. Uh, so parallel camera is the first key to getting flat design in Cinema 4D because with parallel projection you have no depth perspective as you would using the uh, perspective projection which is by default what your camera will have. So that's the first step. And then I just have this rupee and a plane that's going to act as our background that's going to be catching the shadow and our rupee is halfway through and the reason for this is that when the shadow casts, it's just going to cast, if I have my rupee right pressed up uh, on the surface of the wall, the shadow is just going to be cast by just this little back portion, and it's not going to be cast by this whole main portion, just, just by the way that we're going to be doing this. So keep that in mind when we work on this, that I have a plane in my object that's going to be casting this long shadow or infinite shadow is going to be like dissected by this plane. So I think that's it. I think that's about it for setting the scene. So now we can actually start uh, to move forward with adding our uh, long shadow here. So what we want to do is actually create a light and to create an infinite shadow, guess which one we're going to use? We're going to use an infinite light to do this. And what an infinite light is, is a massive light source that kind of just goes to infinity, hence the name. Uh, so the, the thing you need to know about infinite lights is that it does not matter really where you position this uh, light in the scene. The main thing that controls how the light hits is the angle that this light is pointing. So keep that in mind. It, it doesn't matter where the position of the light is. It's all about the rotation. So what we want to do is actually go to our general tab and actually enable shadows. And the shadow type that we want is a hard ray trace shadow because the name of the game here is flat design. We want everything to look flat. So we want this nice, hard, sharp edge shadow. Now you're not going to see anything right away because our light, infinite light, is aiming directly straight at our rupee. So to be able to try to see a shadow going on, we, like I said, we actually need to change the rotation here. And you can see that this little blue dot with a line, that's kind of where our light is aiming. So as I change the rotation and the heading to negative 71 degrees, you can see that there's our little flat shadow. And you can see that we're getting this nice shading on our rupee too. And the one thing I want to do at this point is go into uh, my render settings and I'm going to bring up my good buddy sketch and tune and I'm not going to draw any lines or anything with sketch and tune. The thing I want to do is turn off the background color. I want to quantize and flatten the shading of my entire scene. And to do that, I'm going to use this object shading and the model I'm going to use is quantize. And we're, this is going to limit the colors to a degree of shading defined by the quantize setting. So the less, the smaller the number here, the less, uh, amount of colors that you will have in your scene. So it's almost like optimizing a GIF or something like that where you get rid of 
color shade. So I'm going to bring this down to two and kind of flatten everything out. And you can see that we kind of lost the subtle shading between like this portion of the rupee and this side here, this little panel. So this just kind of adds this nice stylistic flat design kind of feel using the quantize in Sketch and Tune. So that's all we're going to do with Sketch and Tune at this point. And so we need to keep continuing to adjust the angle of the rotation of our infinite light here to get this infinite shadow. So you can adjust the direction that the infinite shadow is going by also adjusting the uh, pitch here. So you can see that this kind of our shadow kind of angles down to the bottom right here. So I'd just like to even this out and just give it a value of negative 45. So it's a nice even uh, angle that's halfway between 90 degrees. I can do maths, I know that. And so what we need to do now is our infinite shadow isn't so infinite. It's not going into infinite space, it's stopping right there. So to actually get this to be more infinite-ish, we need to change the uh, rotation heading even more. So you'll notice as I keep going further and further, I'm losing my shadow. So you can kind of see it's very faint right there when it's at negative 86. Let's see if 80, negative 84. So that's just due to the quantizing. So the name of the game is you want to get it as close to negative 90 degrees as you can but not quite, so we'll just leave it at negative 89. And the thing that we need to do is, since I have uh, luminance set on my background plane here, I actually need to crank up the, the color channel of this, and you'll see that that will pump that shadow back into everything here. So now, you can see as I adjust the color here, uh, that'll kind of darken or lighten our shadow there. There you go. And it's very finicky again because of the, the quantize here. If we turn this off, you can see that it looks completely different. I'm going to turn that back on. So that's flatten everything out. Uh, and we can increase the brightness on our rupee here to try to get this front face back again because I also have illuminance on this too so I think that's looking all right okay so like I said because of quantized you might have to make larger changes than you're used to because we're limiting the color padded palette and you'll see the colors kind of jump pretty dramatically as well with with value changes. So I like that. Uh, so that's basically it. So we have that negative 89 on our light. Let's see if we can do 89.9. You can see that we totally lose our shadow. So you need to just get it as close as you can to negative 90 because negative 90 means that it's going to be parallel to our object. So it's not actually going to cast, uh, cast a light or a shadow on the object just, uh, just because how the uh, infinite light works there. So that's basically it. Uh, so the magic number for um, for the infinite light is at least in the rotation heading this negative 89 but you can kind of mess with the actual angle in the rotation pitch to get the to kind of choose the direction you want your infinite shadow to point at. Uh, so I just just for this composition and just this shape of this rupee, you can see that the negative 45 kind of matches the angle of the edges of our rupee here. And that's basically it. Uh, and then you can you know, kind of rotate this forward if you want and that shadow will then be lost because our angle is too narrow so for this infinite light to work, you want to keep your object as close to the background as possible. Uh, so you, you're kind of limited with uh, how, how you can move your object. But one, uh, one nice thing you can do is just create, a, just create an object that has the shadow applied. So I got my rupee shadow here. Let me remove the 
rotation here. So this actually animates, right? But you'll see that when I animate the, the shadow doesn't exactly match up here. So what you need to do is we'll move this all the way back and this will be just our shadow. And what we'll do is we'll just hide this by using a comp uh, compositing tag to just allow it to cast shadows. And we won't actually have it seen by the camera. And then, so we just have the shadows being cast by this rupee that's flat on the back of this uh, wall here. And then I'm just gonna rename this uh, just normal rupee, get rid of the compositing tag so we can actually see it. And then I'm just gonna move this forward so it doesn't intersect with the plane here that has the shadow cast onto it. So I just have this simple rotation going on. And you'll notice that if I actually use the same rupee, the rupee would be passing in between or intersecting that plane geometry. And you won't, you won't want that because you actually see that in the render. So that's why we create this second object or rupee in front of the other one. And you can see that it kind of matches up pretty nicely. Uh, what you might need to do is kind of shrink down the scale to match, but this actually looks pretty good. Uh, so yeah, so when you rotate it, it'll match up. Uh, actually, yeah, I think everything looks pretty good. And then having that separate object as a shadow, it's rotating the same way. It's, it has the same animation applied and then just bring out the other object forward so we don't have that weird intersecting and then we have our long shadows still attached so there you go that's long shadows in cinema 4d with a little bit of sketch and tune you know i gotta get that in here somehow uh so that's it uh if you have any questions post them in the comments and as always keep on creating see you next time